Welcome back to the channel, guys. It is me, eighty seven four four. So today, guys, we're doing our series, our video, uh, video essay series. Uh, the first topic, first one we got here is about Bayern Munich and Thomas Two uh, Bayern Munich, man. So we're gonna be discussing about the Bayern breakdown. So let me know your guys' thoughts, comments below. Please remember to hit that early like button, guys. Hit that early subscribe button, by the way, guys. And just for you guys' record, I will be putting time subscription below because it'll be a very extensive video, probably around 20 to 30 minutes, because I have a lot to say about the Byron situation. So feel free to comment down below your thoughts, comments through below. And yeah, man, we're going to go ahead and get started. So we're going to start with the two, man, Thomas Tuchel. That's now three losses in a row that Byron has suffered. And I believe this is the first time they've lost three games in a row since 2016, I believe. It's been, very, it's been a long time for Byron to lose three games in a row. And Thomas Tuchel is coming in under immense pressure, given the fact that they only have two trophies to win this season. And one that's been the Bundesliga one is the Champions League. The Bundesliga is eight points behind. And Champions League, it's going to be very difficult. As well as the fact that Bayern haven't had a trophy this season since 2012. Now, is the criticism on Tuchel deserved or is it undeserved? Or it's a bit of both. For me, it's a, it's a, bit, of, it's a bit harsh. But I do think he deserves some blame. But I also feel like you could also be give him some benefits, right? Let me let's let's let, let's be nice to Tuchel first, right? Byron's having to deal with a lot of injuries. I believe at the time of recording this video, Kenzie Coman is injured. I believe Gnabry is injured. Neuer was also out for like beginning of the season, and they had to rely on players that they you know they had to rely on Matthias Tuchel, Sane, and these kind of players to step up. You know, Trevor Monting as well. And you got to give Tuchel like credit like he wanted to get he wanted to get more players in you know and the injuries are something that you know you have to give an excuse with right but at the same time though this is Bayern Munich the standards of Bayern are very high you're expected to win now the Bundesliga should be a win you should be able to win Bundesliga every season if you don't win the Bundesliga it's a sackable offense you know and I just feel like for Tuchel in particular, uh, you have to give credit for what he's done. Because, like, this season, Byron's been great this season. It's just they haven't been great for their standards. Because for any other club, like any other team non-Bayern Munich, this would be a great season for them. You know? You know? It's just that for Bayern Munich, the standards is really... It, it's They've just not been great for their standards. You know? And Thomas Tuchel is a coach that I think is a coach that is... A uh, very much a tactical, flexible coach. He is known to change up his style. We, he's known to be very tactically intelligent, and he's been able to outcoach. I mean, look what he did when the season he won the Champions League. He defeated Pep Guardiola three times, and you know, and denied Pep uh, two trophies in the process: the FA Cup um, and the Champions League. So you got to give him credit that he can be able to oust one of the best managers of the world, uh, Pep Guardiola. At the same time, though, he's capable of losing a Boca match, as we just saw a few weeks ago. My issue with Tuchel is that I feel like, for me, he just doesn't have the tactical acumen, and there's just too much pressure on him at Bayern Munich. Because I look at that game against Leverkusen. Why on the earth would you switch to a back three when the team has never played a back three before prior to that game? Why would you do it? It's just such a stupid idea, you know? And you're trying to adapt to Hansi. You're trying to adapt to uh, Jabi Lanza's uh, Bayer Leverkusen team. And for me, if you're adapting to the opponent, that is very bad. That shows you're not a good coach. You're just letting the other coach decide what you're going to do. It should be the other way around. Leverkusen should be actually doing what Bayern Munich is doing. They should be able to do, you know. And the fact you got out, you got out coached by Jabi Alonso, a coach that's only been here for around two years now, is actually shocking. And Javi Alonso has a far more inferior team compared to uh, Bayern Munich. So what Javi Alonso is doing with Bayern Leverkusen is outstanding. It's incredible. You know, and I just look at Tuchel in particular and just, I don't just don't understand his persistence of, you know, not using certain players. Like, why is Mateus De Litt not being used that much? I don't know what's happened to him. He even prefers Eric, Eric Dyer over um, Mateus De Litt, even though Eric Dyer is only just alone, you know? And then obviously he's had a falling out with Joshua Kimmich. Joshua Kimmich has been a player that he's been very much falling out with. And the same goes with Thomas Muller. These players are very, very critical to Bayern Munich. They're like the core of Bayern Munich's team. You can't really replace these players or try to drop these players. They're very much indispensable. You know, so I just feel like for me what's too cool is that there's just too much expectation or pressure that 
you know, there's just so much. I, I think, is it maybe the egos in the dressing room? Maybe there's like a lot of egos in the dressing room, you know, having to handle all the big players, all the big, big personalities. And I just feel like for me with Tuchel is that he is a coach that is very much result based because the style of football is bad. I'm sorry. Like, the, like if you want to watch the style of football, it's, it's bad. It's not good to watch. It's bad. It's very much, very much result based. You know, and I just feel like for me, with, with just the standard set of Bayern Munich is you have to win now and you have to win pretty. You can't just win now. You got to be dominant when they have this kind of culture in their mindset, you know, and that's just how the Bayern culture is, you know. And I just feel like for me, Tuchel was always too pragmatic. He was always too pragmatic for the job. And I just feel like for me, Bayern wasn't really the true fit. And people are saying, oh, look, we won the Bundesliga last season. Yes, he won the Bundesliga last season. But the issue with that one is, that was more so of Dortmund actually bricking things up rather than Bayern doing great. Because we all know, football fans will know that Dortmund should have won that league. They had the final game at home against Mainz, a team that had nothing, a team that had nothing to play for, and Bayern Munich had to travel away to Köln, FC Köln, and Jamal Musial scored that game-winning goal. If Musial doesn't score, doesn't score that game-winning goal, Dortmund will be crowned as champions and will be have a very different conversation. And who knows, Tuchel may have been sacked if they had not won the league. You know, I just feel like for me with Tuchel is that you see this every club he's been at, you know, every single club he's been at, he's had a falling out with the board. He's had a falling out of the board and he doesn't stay for long. And I feel like this season, you could see there's already a falling out with him in the board on the fact that the board promised him that we get a Joao Paulinha only for him to not join a deadline day. Like, how do you already agree in a player? And then the player just says, nah, I'm not going to join the on deadline day. It's just ridiculous. You know, because Byron really needs a DM. And I think maybe if Tuchel was given a DM, that quality DM, Paulinha, he could elevate this Byron team because this Byron team really needs that midfielder. And that's so for me with Tuchel is that do I think it's the right decision for him to go in the end of the season? Absolutely. I think it's time. It's best that they move on from him. And to be honest with you, I think they may maybe should, maybe should be moving on from him now. But obviously, I understand why they waited until the summer. So, you know, Byron could find the time to get that adequate time to get the re proper replacement in and to do their scouting and everything. Because Byron Munich, like I said, man, like to bring Tuchel in in a short term basis last year just for them to win a treble, for the idea that they could potentially win a treble was just a very much a very much narrow minded mindset. As well as the fact that I just feel like for me, Tuchel was just brought in because they really wanted the Champions League. I think they really, really wanted that Champions League last season. And they saw, oh, look, Chelsea brought Tuchel in midseason, so we could do the same and bring him midseason and win the Champions League with. But it's not that simple. Football is not that simple. We could just bring in someone and someone in to the job and expect them to do to win a miracle, you know. And I just feel like for me, you have to look at that Chelsea situation very differently now because Chelsea, Tuchel came in in December, I'm sorry, January. Tuchel with Bayern came in in March. That is very different because March and January is. Yes, it may seem close, but it's not close because remember you have the whole January window to work with. You have a lot more matches to play with, to prepare. Whereas Tuchel just came in and had just a few matches, and then all of a sudden he's thrown into a Champions League game against Manchester City. You know, and I just feel like for me that loss to Manchester City was the way that this should have happened. Like the fact that they lost to Man City in that kind of fashion is embarrassing. And let's be real, guys. The reason why Bayern Munich, because let's be honest, as I said earlier, guys, Bayern Munich should have won last season's Bundesliga. This season really sh is what last season should have been. You know, Leverkusen are eight points clear. And for me, Bayern Munich, should, um, it would be very crazy in Bayern to win this league because they're going to have to basically hope that Leverkusen is going to lose this streak because that's the only way I could see Bayern winning this league if Leverkusen is going to lose this streak. Because if Leverkusen do not go to lose this streak, I think it might be really over for Bayern. I think I might really be over for Bayern Munich. And I just think for Bayern Munich, man, they have to look at themselves and they made this mess. And so for Tuchel, man, as I said, like you could blame the Tuchel all you want. But at the end of the day, the bigger issue isn't really the Tuchel and myself, in my opinion. The bigger issue for me is the Bayern board, which we'll get onto a bit later in this video. But I think for Tuchel, I think it's right. I think it's right for them to part ways at the end of the season with him, find a different coach. They can instill that Bayern winning mentality. And that's also another thing. He hasn't been able to instill the mentality in these players. Because this player, the players just don't look organized. They don't look, they don't look motivated. 
to win. They looked abject and dejected. So, anyways, I think I spent enough time about Tuchel. If there's any other additional thoughts you guys want to know, uh, let me know about Tuchel. Let me know in the comments below. I'm sure there probably is. And yes, we know, guys, Tuchel is a short-term coach. He isn't a coach for the long term. He's uh, he's not a long-term coach whatsoever. So now we're talking about the players. Let me start with Leroy Sané. Leroy Sané, for me, is a player that I always think is a good player. However, he isn't a prolific player. And I think that's what we've been seeing, is that because in terms of dribbling, in terms of ball control and everything like that, I think Sané is actually really good in that aspect. Because when it comes to dribbling and ball decision and ball carrying and ball retention, I think the guy is up there as one of the best wingers in the world. But the issue is, to be considered one of the best wingers in the world, you have to be prolific. You just have to be prolific from that position. Because if you're not prolific, you're just not going to get, you're just not going to be that, ama- you're not going to be talked about as enough, you know? And that's just how football is nowadays. Like, goal scoring is such a high mantle, high pedestal, and that if goal scoring isn't your, really your forte, it's going to be hard to get the recognition from non-fans, you know, non Bayern Munich fans. You know, and what's crazy because Leroy Sané was actually really good the first half of the season. Like first half of the season, he was cooking. He was fantastic. And then the second half of the season, he started to be really, really, sh- I don't know what's happened to Sané in the second half of the season because he looks shocking. He looks absolutely shocking. Now let's talk about Harry Kane. There's one on talk about Harry Kane this season and that I think Harry Kane is a curse that Bayern Munich's been going through. And maybe he's the reason why sp- they are in this position. But for me, that is actually a very stupid take. Because if you actually look at the goals that Kane scored, he has scored 27 goals and all 27 goals in Bundesliga. He has scored a lot of goals for Bayern Munich. You know, and he has just been that crucial guy for Bayern Munich. Because when it comes to league football, you need to have the guy that is consistently consistent. And say what you will about Kane and big games whatsoever and this kind of stuff. Kane has at least shown up in the games in the Bundesliga games. Kane has at least been consistent, okay? And he just recently scored a brace against RB Leipzig, a very crucial brace to um, to give them a huge three points. So I think Kane is a very, very important player. Then I look at another player, Goretzka. Goretzka has been finished. Ever since 2020, this guy has gone downhill, guys. He just hasn't been the same. I think Bayern Munich needs to move on from him. They need to sell him because the guy is just... He's just such a such a liability. I just feel like for me, he just doesn't do anything on the pitch, you know. And I feel like Bayern needs to move on from him. And Gnabry is another player that's also completely dipped. Ever since he won the Champions League, the guy looks completely, completely useless. Okay, he just isn't been great at all. And there's also been a lot of uh, nego- there's also been a lot of se- behind the scenes with Davis. There's been a lot of rumors that Davis could leave uh, Bayern Munich this season. At the end of the season, and that could be a huge, huge blow for Bayern Munich because he has uh, been one of their best. Um, he's a very talented player. We know the guy, how much talent he's he's got as a uh, he's got, you know, and he's also versatile. He can play as a left back and as a left winger. So my thing with Bayern Munich is that there's just so much issues going on off the pitch, the dressing room, and maybe that's why the players just not haven't been performing well, you know. And as I said earlier, Joshua Kimmich has just not really been seen eye to eye with Tuchel. Because Tuchel doesn't really like to play him as a midfielder. I think he prefers to play him as a right back. But Tuchel, but Kimmich himself doesn't want to play as a right back. He wants to play as a midfielder. Then you also have another player like Matthias De Ligt, as I mentioned earlier, that's hardly getting any game time whatsoever. Matthias De Ligt is likely is probably going to leave this summer. And the only real concern that I feel really bad for Jamal Musial. Jamal Musial, for me, is Bayern Munich's most talented player. Because when you look at the guy, when it comes to dribbling, when it comes to shooting and this kind of stuff, the guy is talented. The guy is amazing when it comes to dribbling. Like, the guy is just amazing. I, he's a fantastic player. And I feel really bad for him because if he was in a, if he was in a team that was better co- a better structure, he probably would have flourished just as well, you know? And I just think for Bayern Munich, man, if you look at the transfers they made post-2020, um, they haven't been able to replace Thiago. They haven't replaced Thiago Alcantara at all. The guy that was instrumental for Bayern to win the Champions League. They haven't replaced them all. They tried bringing in Mark Roca. They tried bringing in Limor and these kind of players. And these players just don't simply fit the profile of Thiago. Thiago is a world-class player on his day. And we saw how important he was for Bayern Munich to win that Champions League. There is even a strong argument that can be made that if Bayern Munich didn't have him, 
Would they have been able to win the Champions League that year? Who knows? Because that guy was just amazing, especially against Barcelona in my club. He was really, really good. You know, and then obviously Bayern Munich, um, they need to get some wingers. I think they have to sign some wingers at the um, soon because I'm looking at the wingers they have right now. Mateus Till is probably the only good winger that I think is great. That Mateus Till guy is very versatile. He's a good player, but I believe he's he's a good player, man. But like I said, he's very young, so you you can't really have too much expectations for him. So and the kids in Coleman for me is a player that is on his day can be very a, a good be good, but. He's just not that consistent of a player. He's only going to chip in every once in a while. So you see, there's a lot of issues with this Bayern Munich team that some of these players just have to go. Some of these players need to improve in form. And some of these players are just too good to be here. And then some of these players, they got to deal with their contracts situation. So it's it's a complete mess with the Bayern Munich team because this team is completely, uh, it is completely in disarray. Uh, as off the pitch and they have to fix off the pitch issues if they want to build on team chemistry because chemistry is very important that bonding with one another you know and i just feel like for me this Bayern team at the current moment from what i feel they're very much divided there is not this eye to eye among the players players are just doing at their own free will so it's gonna be interesting to see how Bayern does man Bayern does you know and i just think for Bayern munich man it, it's just crazy that um they only made two good transfers Post 2020, which are probably been Harry Kane and Kim and Jay. The rest of their signings have been either meh or terrible or just not been given enough time, you know. And I just think for me, it's going to be very interesting to see how Byron does and how they're going to approach the summer because, like I said, they have to sign a DM. They have to sign a DM this summer 100%. So now we're going to talk about the coaches. Who should Byron hire next to, to replace? Um, Thomas Tuchel. Because obviously, Thomas Tuchel is going to be leaving the end of the season. So I did see some uh, nominees. Uh, I was looking at some nominees, doing some research, and apparently Byron is interested in Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Let me just say this right now, guys. If Ole Gunnar Solskjaer joins Bayern Munich, Bayern Munich is going to be an absolute clown fest. Like, I, I wouldn't even be scared if Byron don't get top four. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. If Byron get Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, I wouldn't be surprised if they get top four. Jean Milonzo would be the most disrespectful thing. Because let's be real, guys. Jean Milonzo is a great position to potentially win Bayer Leverkusen, the first league title ever in their history. Imagine he goes to Bayern Munich, the club that is his rivals for the league title. And I know Bayer Leverkusen and Bayern Munich aren't really rivals per se. I mean, I know that you guys will tell me that chat, but just look at the context of the season. Are you really going to join the team that you had just beat into the league title? Like, that would be incredibly shameless. I'm sorry to say, like, if Javi Alonso does that, this league is look, is going to get cooked. This league is going to get is, is going to look bad for the league because how does the team that has just won the league go to a club that just lost the league for a long time and to make sure it never happens again? Because let's be real, guys. Let's be real. If Javi Alonso is the coach for Leverkusen, I don't think Leverkusen would be in this position right now. He's the reason why Leverkusen are in this position, you know? And I just really hope that Bayern Munich don't get... Um, obviously, uh, uh, obviously they don't get Javi Lonzo because that would be very interesting. Now we have Zinedine Zidane. Now this is a very interesting one, a very unusual one. I still don't believe it's going to happen because Zinedine Zidane, from my knowledge, doesn't speak German. Uh, maybe I'm wrong in the comments below. Please let me know. From my knowledge, he speaks Spanish and French and maybe Algerian as well. Primarily, let's be honest, let's, it's probably primarily Spanish. So I just don't really see Zidane being a realistic option. And I just feel like for me, Zidane is just thrown out there because of his, how big his name is. Like, his name is just so huge that you could just put him in there um, and have him be your potential candidates for, like, new stuff. But obviously, I don't know how realistic that's going to be. So to basically round things off for you guys, as a quick summary of this, I want to basically say that Tuchel's coming into a bit of a mess. He's had so much high expectations to win the Champions League, win the Bundesliga, to get Bayern back to where they belong. And then obviously, um, the players, man, the players just haven't been playing well this season. Like, majority of the players just haven't. They have underperformed for large parts of the season. And there's got to be criticism for those players. It's not just on the coach as well. And then for the Bayern board, man, they have to have to take a blame as well. Like, how do you... How do you already get a player that you thought you had agreed with only just to back down from him on deadline day or the club, the parent club just back down on him on deadline day? It's just absolutely ridiculous. 
So Bayern Munich this summer have to get a good coach, obviously, and they have to find a DM. They have to find a DM uh, because those are very, very crucial positions. And I also forgot to mention this for the players. Like, they have to move on from Thomas Muller. They got to move on from Thomas Muller. They got to respect Thomas Muller because Thomas Muller went viral after that interview he gave against, um, what was it? I think, Bayern Leverkusen, that 3-0 loss. He, he, he went crazy, man. He went crazy. So, yeah, man, I think that's pretty much it. It's a very long video, guys, 20 minutes. I know I I know I know uh, did go a bit of a um, tangent there with some of this uh, stuff said, but, you know, that's the beauty of the comments, that you guys can let me know what you guys think of the situation because, like I said, guys, with Bayern Munich, man, it's a complete mess. It's a complete mess. And the decision to sock Nagelsmann for Tuchel might go down as one of the worst decisions ever. Like, how do you sock Nagelsmann just before – the Champions League quarterfinal matchup, you know, especially given how good by Bayern Munich were at that time of the season. It's just unbelievable. But yeah, man, that's pretty much it. Going to be it for today, guys. Hope you guys did. Please remember to hit the like button, guys. Hit the subscribe button on your way out, guys. Comment below your thoughts, comments below. Remember to check out the platforms in the description below to become a member of the challenge, guys. Members, member streams. And yeah, man, more videos, essays coming up for you guys in a few weeks' time. I'll see you guys then. Peace out.